Welcome back, knowledge nerds. Ready to dive deep. Always. What are we digging into today? This time, it's Discovery Fest, which from the looks of it is trying to be the biggest thing ever in online learning. Ah, yes, the old revolutionize how we learn pitch. Seen a few of those. Right. Yeah. Our listener wants the no BS breakdown. Is it worth blocking off 48 hours for this thing, virtual or otherwise? Ambitious. For sure. We're working off the event description too, so yeah. you know, take that with a grain of salt. Full of hype. But I will say, splitting it into those three tracks is promising, at least. Course creators, digital marketers, then just learners. Shows they're not trying to be everything to everyone. Good point. Mm -hmm. Nothing worse than a generic webinar that's like vaguely about your field, but not really. Okay, so separate tracks, that's good. But global, 48 hours straight is a flex even online. And then there's a the whole in-person thing in Puerto Rico. Yeah, gotta wonder if that's just FOMO bait. Right, okay, so first up, this whole simulcast thing. 48 hours, different time zones, translated into 34 languages. They're really going for it. It's like the Olympics of online learning if they can actually pull it off. Imagine experts from all over the place talking about what they know best in a language you understand and you can catch it live whenever it fits your schedule. Game changer. No more trying to convert time zones or hoping someone recorded the one session you couldn't miss. Exactly. Though, whether they can handle the technical side of things, that's the big question mark. Real-time translation at that scale. We'll see. And what about you listening right now? Imagine you could be sipping your coffee and learning from, like, a top instructional designer in Norway before your workday even starts. That's the potential here. And it's not just about the live stuff either. They're also talking about these breakout networking rooms like even more niche groups to connect with. But can they make that work virtually? Million dollar question. They mentioned rooms for course creators, for learners, for affiliates, even influencers. So at least they're thinking about it. That's something. It is. Oh. But what platform are they using? What's the moderation going to be like? Is this just going to be a bunch of awkward Zoom breakouts? Or are they doing something cooler, more interactive? Because a well-designed virtual space that has the potential to connect you with people across the world in a way that just wouldn't happen otherwise. It's the difference between going to an amazing concert and just listening to the album at home. Exactly. You might be hearing the same thing, but the energy is completely different. Speaking of energy, we got to talk about this in-person thing. Puerto Rico, limited capacity, exclusive access, resort. Sounds like someone's trying to create some serious FOMO. And you know they're playing up that exclusive angle in the description. Oh, absolutely. But it's a smart move. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to network with e-learning gurus by the pool with a pina colada in hand? Especially if you're someone who really thrives in that face-to-face -face environment, getting to actually talk to people. For sure. But let's be real. Going to an event like this, it's a commitment. Travel costs, time off work, potentially family stuff too. It's not a decision you make lightly. Exactly. It goes beyond just, is the content interesting? You got to weigh the value of those in-person connections, the exclusive stuff against the investment and honestly for a lot of people virtual is the way to go especially if you're mainly there for the actual learning right mm. and speaking of which mm -hmm. let's get into those tracks because they've got some pretty bold claims in this description oh yeah they're not holding back not at all so course creators track sounds like it's all about the business side of online courses yeah lots of buzzwords being thrown around Digital course creation, student engagement, productivity, efficiency. Like e-learning 101, but hopefully with a bit more meat to it. That's the thing, right? Anyone can make a slideshow about how to create a course. We want the good stuff. Exactly. Give me the how I built a million dollar course empire talk. Or the three engagement strategies that saved my retention rate. Deep dive. Yes. Specifics, case studies, data. That's what makes it valuable, whether you're just starting out or you've been doing this for years. For sure. Okay, the digital marketers track. This one I'm both curious and skeptical about. They're promising time-tested strategies and cutting-edge techniques, which always makes me go, hmm, really? Right. Like, is this grandma's secret recipe or the latest molecular gastronomy? Exactly. Sounds impressive, but I need to see it to believe it. Because the e-learning market is booming right now, which means the marketing has to keep changing, too. What worked last year might not work today. So what counts as cutting edge here? That's what I want to know. Are we talking AI-powered sales funnels? <laughs> or just a slightly fancier email campaign? Show me the receipts. Right. Show me the receipts. Okay, now the learner's track. This one's interesting because it's not about the business of e-learning. It's about being a better learner. 
which honestly, that's a useful skill for anyone. Totally. And they're talking about learning faster, remembering more, even like rewiring your brain for better learning. They even say it's not about being smart. It's about having the right strategies, <laughs> which I like. Yeah, sign me up for that. <laughs> like the movie Limitless, but in real life. And this track could be helpful even if you already consider yourself a pro at this whole e-learning thing. Definitely. I'd want them to get into the nitty gritty though. Like, are we talking active recall, spaced repetition, any actual neuroscience backed stuff? Give me the science. Right. Because that's the stuff that can change how you learn anything, not just online courses. 100%. And this brings up a really important point that they kind of dance around in the description. Who are the speakers? Ah, uh, yes, because that makes all the difference. Right, like a lineup of big names, industry leaders, people who are actually out there doing this stuff. That gives the whole event more weight. It's like, would you rather learn to cook from a Michelin star chef or your well-meaning but kind of messy uncle? Oof, yeah. I'm going with the chef on that one. Exactly. Both can be fun, but only one's going to teach you serious skills. So yeah, who are these experts? What have they done? What unique perspective are they bringing? Because are they sharing real-world experience, stuff they've actually used? Or is it just generic advice you could find anywhere? That's something our listener needs to investigate before they decide if this whole thing's worth their time. For sure. And speaking of time, let's not forget, this whole thing is also a giant launch party for their new platform, The Great Discovery. Bold move, right. Launching a whole platform at the same time as this huge event. It's like opening the biggest library in the world and using the grand opening to also debut a brand new genre of books. That's a good analogy. Risky, definitely, but intriguing. Oh, yeah. What gets me is the scale. 147 languages, affiliates in 200 countries. It's like they're building the United Nations of e-learning platforms. And maybe that's not a coincidence, given how much they're pushing the whole global access thing. Right. They're loading up the event with valuable content about creating, marketing, even becoming a better learner. Almost like they're showing off what the great discovery is supposed to be all about. Clever strategy. Get people excited about the possibilities, showcase the platform's features, and hopefully turn attendees into users. But the big question is, is the great discovery the real deal? Or is it going to be another one of those platforms that just fades away? And that's what we're going to look at next, because a deep dive into Discovery Fest wouldn't be complete without talking about the platform itself. So we've covered a lot of ground here. Global reach, the different learning tracks, that tempting Puerto Rico meetup, and of course, their whole new platform. It's a lot to wrap your head around. Drinking from the fire hose of e-learning, that's for sure. Our uh, listeners probably wondering which way to turn at this point. That's what we're here for to help you cut through the noise and figure out, okay, what matters to me? Exactly. What are your priorities? Right. So if you're mostly here for the free knowledge, learning from experts you might not otherwise. Honestly, the virtual part of Discovery Fest is pretty hard to beat. It's like a global e-learning conference you can attend from your couch. In your pajamas, no judgment. <laughs> Plus, don't forget about the giveaways they mentioned. Everybody loves some free swag. Smart move on their part little incentive to sweeten the pot. Exactly. Free courses, resources, maybe even a discount on the platform builds excitement. For sure. And speaking of the great discovery, this event is our first real look at what they're building, isn't it? It's like they're saying, come for the free stuff, stay for the platform that'll change everything. And they're betting big on that platform being the main attraction, not just a sideshow. Right. I mean, 147 languages, uh, affiliates in 200 countries. That's not just building a platform, that's building an empire. Ambitious doesn't even begin to describe it. Nope. Whether they can pull it off, that's a whole other story. But here's the thing for our listener. I think even if the great discovery itself doesn't become the next big thing, the trends it represents, those are important. A hundred percent. This whole push for learning to be more global, more accessible, high quality stuff, but also stuff that's made for different kinds of learners, different needs, that's not going away. If anything, it's only going to get bigger. So Discovery Fest, in a way, it's like a glimpse into the future of all this. Exactly. Even if you decide, you know what, 48 hours is a bit much for me, which, fair. Pay attention to the conversations happening there. Pay attention to the tech they're showcasing. Because the future's being built right in front of us. And who knows, you might discover your next favorite learning tool or community or something you didn't even know existed. Love that. And on that note, that wraps up our deep dive into Discovery Fest. Until next time. We'll catch you in the next episode where we'll be tackling something else. Until then, happy learning.